So you want to take part in a game jam. But maybe you don't know how to join a jam or how to create a game in the limited amount of time the jam provides. Well, let's go into game jams and get you ready to tackle one. Starting at the very beginning, what even is a game jam? Game jams are competitions where game developers get a chance to practice and learn new things by creating a game under some kind of restriction. Usually that restriction is a time limit and an unknown theme that gets announced at the beginning of the jam. The length of a game jam varies. They can be 48 hours long, 72 hours long, or take weeks, months, or even years. Some of the biggest game jams are Ludum Dare, Global Game Jam, GMTK Jam, The Wowie Jam, and Brackies. Where can you find or join a game jam? Jams are held all around the world, in person and online. The website best known for hosting game jams is itch.io, where they have a calendar page dedicated to game jams. If you want to join one, all you need to do is find one that you like and click join. What tools can you use for a game jam? Most jams will let you use any game engine or tool that you want to use. But those tools can be a part of the restrictions for a particular jam. Like how our game jams require that you use the GDevelop game engine when making your game. You don't need to be great at coding in order to take part in a game jam. Because with GDevelop, you can create a game with its no-code event system. Games made with GDevelop can often rank high or even win game jams because it is a great tool for quickly prototyping and testing your game concepts. If you'd like to take part in a GDevelop game jam, the link to our next one will be in the description. Now, how to succeed in a game jam. If you're able to submit a finished game in a jam, you'll already be doing better than the majority of participants. The number of games submitted will usually be around 20% of the total number of participants. So just getting your game in before the deadline is a huge win. But then ranking high in a game jam is a matter of good planning, great execution, and a healthy amount of luck. When a jam begins, the theme will be announced and you can start working on your game. And from here you want to take a decent amount of time to decide what kind of game you're going to make. So if the jam you're taking part in is 48 hours long, you'll want to spend a couple of those deciding on what kind of game you're going to make. The most important part of that decision is scope. Scope refers to the size of your game. The number of mechanics, the amount of music and sound effects in your game, the amount of time you expect players to play for, and all of those sorts of things. For a game jam, you want to keep your scope as tiny as possible. It's far better to send in a small, polished game than a giant mess. Once you've decided on your game's mechanics and scope, you should then plan out your time into a few different chunks. Starting with making the base mechanics for your game, usually with some crudely drawn art or squares. Ideally, this should be no more than one third of your total time. If you're still adding new mechanics by the halfway point of the jam, your scope is way too big. Then the second chunk of time should be a light polish phase, where you replace the prototype art with some keyframes and images and sound effects to get the game to a point where people can understand where it's going. But not so far that the game looks like it's almost finished, because you don't want to have to redo art or sound effects because of the next phase, which is playtesting and evaluating the idea. Depending on the length of the jam, there is no time for second guessing. You can't go back to the drawing board. But if you're able to get some playtesters for your game to test out the game in its current state, then you'll be able to fix some design issues that you didn't think of during the planning phase. Ideally, you can get some friends or family members to play your game blind, which will help you see where players are struggling and what things they don't understand. And then in the next phase, you act on those findings and fix any issues with your game mechanics that players didn't understand. And then the last phase is heavy polish. Dedicate as much time as you can to this phase, because your game's appearance and feel are going to make the difference between failure and success. And then it's really tempting to use all of your time right to the last minute, but try to submit your game an hour or two before the deadline. Because giving yourself that buffer will give you the time to resubmit your game if something goes wrong. Now finally some tips on getting better ratings for your game. Firstly, make sure your game is easy. You have been playing your game for the entire length of the jam, so you are a terrible judge of how difficult the game is. So when trying to balance the difficulty, try to make it really easy. Because easy for you is probably going to be a good difficulty for a new player. 
Secondly, if your game is too long, people rating games in the jam who are going to want to try out other games will either get frustrated or quit your game early to go play other games. And either of those will result in a worse score for you. So keep the play length of your game between 5 and 15 minutes so people can experience all the work you put into it in a nice tidy package. And the last thing is to have a tutorial. It doesn't need to be a full-blown tutorial level, but just be aware of your game's first-time experience for players. If people can't figure out how to play your game, they're not going to rate it very well. Game jams are great for testing out ideas, and a lot of full-blown games have started out in game jams. So if you think that your game has potential, and you want to put it in front of a wider audience, then be sure to check out this video where we show you how to do just that.